Hey guys, welcome back. So in this video, we're going to create the terrain for our model. So it's going to be a slope terrain and we're going to bring in that terrain from Google Maps using the location feature in SketchUp. So the first step is go to view toolbars and switch on location here. So this is the toolbar called location. So make sure to switch that on. And then let's click on add location. You would need to have an active internet connection for this to work. Then what you could do is I've shared some coordinates in the exercise file. So you can copy this and then paste it in here. So paste in the coordinates. So the latitude and longitude, which I've got from Google maps and click on search. All right. So this is a site in Southwest of India in a place called Wynad. So we need to select a region first. Also, you can switch between the different maps. So right now I'm using the satellite view. You can also switch to the street map, which will show you the roads, buildings and more. Now, since there are not many roads in this region, it's not showing up. It's a small muddy road in that site. So I'm going to stick to satellite. So let's click on search again. So that's our coordinate there. So this is the site that we're going to import into SketchUp. Now to import it, we need to select a region. So let's click on select region here. Now these are the four boundary pins or the four boundaries where you can change the size of the region you want to bring into SketchUp. Now there is a limit in SketchUp. So if you keep scrolling out, you can see that the pins here change to red, which means you cannot import it since the number of tiles is more. So it has to be around 575 tiles or a certain area. So in my case, what I will do is I'll zoom in to my site. So in case you notice that you get lost searching for the site, you can simply click on the X button again and then search the coordinates for it again. So now I know where exactly my site is. Click on select region. I'm just going to make sort of a square region like this. Zoom in a bit more. And then you can select the resolution. So if you're not using the pro version, you will not be able to bring in a high resolution image. So in my case, I would need a high resolution image. So I will drag the slider all the way to the right. And then you can also select a image provider. You can choose between DG globe or Bing. Now switching on tile boundaries would create this grid in your map, which is 256 by 256 pixels of the high resolution image. Now I would not need these tile boundaries on. And then once I'm happy with the region, I'm going to click on import. All right, so you can see that we brought in our location perfectly. Now we don't see the terrain and it's flat in nature. To switch on the terrain, you can go to your tags in your default tray and we have the location terrain option here. So let's switch on this tag. And now you can see that we can notice the terrain in the site. So adding location adds two tags. One is the flat site and one is the terrain of the site. So let's switch off the flat rectangle, which is just the mapped area of the site. So I'm going to switch that off. And now you can see the terrain of the model. All right. So now what I'm going to do is I have my cat plan and I have my house as well. And I'm going to orient it to the exact site. So I'm not going to rotate the site, but I'm going to rotate the plan and the cat site plan. So what I will do first is I will select the cat plan and the house and then I'll right click and make it a group. So if I hide the terrain which we brought in, you can see the site plan. I'm going to rotate the site plan and the model along the site. So let's switch on location snapshot. Let's switch off location terrain because I like to have it flat. And now I'm going to move it according to the site conditions. So I am pretty familiar with the site and the exact location of the site. So I'm just going to move it in place. So we have three buildings. So this is one house, one house here and another house here. And our site is somewhere here. So I'm going to select the site and just move it to the corner here. All right, perfect. And then I'm going to rotate it. So I'm going to activate the rotate tool, snap it to the red, blue axis and then rotate it like this. I almost got it. So let me just move it in place some more. Need to rotate it a bit more and we are done. So this is the large site. 
let me go to the top view and zoom out a bit switch off location terrain for now so now you can see we have a small road here we have a house here another house here another house here and this is the proposed model that we will be placing in this site and this is a slope terrain with a lot of rubber trees in this site so you're going to keep a house closer to the road for better access and we're going to do some farming and more on this site all right perfect now what i'll do is i'll switch off location snapshot and show only the terrain and now you can see how the building sits on the terrain perfect now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the slicer plugin to create the contours on my site and this will help visualize the site better and is a good way to present the site to the client as well. So let's go to view toolbars and let's check if we have the slicer plugin installed. We do so you can switch this on. If you'd like to know how to install these plugins you can check the video on how to install sketchication plugins in SketchUp on my YouTube channel. So I'm going to move this here. Now to make this work, you need to have a manifold solid object. So if I select the site now, you can see right now it's also locked, so it will not work. So let's unlock it first. So right click and click on unlock and then select the object again and let's click on slice. So now you can see that the select object is not a manifold solid. So we need to make it a manifold solid, which means it's a proper solid group. So for example, if I make this a group and push it up and select this, and now if I click on slicer, it works because this is a proper solid as seen in entity info. So you can see this is a solid group. So how do I make this a solid group? There are few ways. First is push this down the surface here using the join push pull tool plugin. So let's activate the joint push pull tool plugin. What I'm also going to do is I'm going to make a copy of this just in case I need it in the future. So I'm going to press control C, edit, paste in place. And I'm going to create a new tag called this location temp. And then assign one of these to the location temp tag. So this way, I have a copy as well. So now to make this a solid group, what you can do is enter the group. So now you can see we can select the bottom face and in the joint push pool plugin, we have something called the vector push. So let's select that. So this will let you to push the surface vertically down. But to make it work properly, we will also need to retain the top surface. So if you see right now, it's set at erase original face which is not what we need. We need to select the second option, which is called Thicken, which is to keep the original face. So let's select that and let's select the bottom face. Let's tap the blue axis. So that will make sure that it is projecting down vertically. And then let's click again. So you can see we've just made a nice thick base for that side. And let's click on the outside to create that thick base at the bottom. So now if I select this group, you can see now it is a solid group. And now we can slice this into contours as well. So let's select the slicer 5 plugin after selecting the solid group. So let's select that. Perfect. Now there are certain parameters that you need to keep in mind. So the axis is how we need to slice this object. So of course it will be in the Z axis. So let's select Z. Now the spacing is going to be about 3 feet, so I'm going to tap in 3 feet. And the thickness of each contour would also be about 3 feet. Now inset is the start if you want to keep any offset. We don't, do not need any offsets from the start or from the bottom, so you can leave this at 0 and 0. Centralization will be set at slice, so that it slices equally. And then we can also add references, which basically adds numbers to each sliced object in this group. So we can keep a reference just in case you want to reference the contour line as well. Text height is how big of the text of this reference you want it to be. So let's keep it about maybe 10 inches. 10 inches also would be small. So maybe 10 feet. 
and flatten is generally used for cnc mills where you would like to see each profile and its shape so we do not need flatten for now so click on no and then press ok it's a good idea to click on yes because this will create an outline for each of the sliced object in the model so let's click on yes give it a bit for it to compute all right so after a while you can see that the contours have been created now these are the reference lines or the reference numbers for each contour and in case you would like to print out these contours then what you can do is you can click on slicer again so let me just select an object click on slicer and this time you can switch on flatten so what this does is now if i slice this quickly so let me just slice this you can notice that it flattens out each of these slices and it also gives a number which will help you in your cnc process as well all right so that's how you create a contour now we will not be using this for this course because we'll be using the site itself it looks good and so if you switch on the site you can see our site here by the way the contours also come with tags so you can sort of group these together so let's select all of them and click on the group layer here call this contours so you can hide those as well you can also give a color and this will help you in your presentation at the conceptual stage in your project so i hope you found this video useful i'll see you guys in the next video where we'll sort of hide the contours and go ahead proceed with our terrain here we might try to use the contours a bit but i guess this terrain should work well and we'll start with the rendering process where we'll place the elements and more and get ready to visualize our project so i'll see you guys next video cheers